This is the one many have called Mother Mary, the mother of Jesus the Christ. The Seventh Teaching Follow Your Joy You were given a compass, and that compass is joy. You are meant to go in the direction that brings joy, not in the direction that brings suffering. The egoic mind promises you joy, but delivers only temporary satisfaction and happiness. Then the suffering that comes with feeling that you never have enough returns. Most people don't follow their joy. Instead, they follow the sense of not having or being enough. They allow the sense of lack to drive them forward, seeking here and there for fulfillment, for what will fill the sense of lack created by the human condition, the ego. However, nothing that the egoic mind suggests can fill that lack because the sense of lack was created by the same thing that proposes to fix it. How can something, the ego, that creates a sense of lack also solve the problem of feeling lacking? And why would it? The solution can't be found by chasing after the ideas presented by the very thing that created the problem. The sense of lack cannot be solved by the egoic mind, no matter how convincing the egoic mind sounds. The sense of lack can only be solved by dropping out of the mind. When you drop out of the mind, you lose the sense that anything is lacking. That's an easy solution. There never was anything lacking, and that's all you ever had to see to feel full and complete. Nothing was ever needed except to see the truth. Nothing is lacking in you, in others, or in life. The sense of lack is part of the illusion created by the mind. When you know you are not your mind, then the illusion of lack disappears. No more lack. Nothing is or ever was lacking. The belief that something is lacking makes it seem true, but it's not true. Your beliefs are powerful. You create the experience of lack simply by believing that something is lacking. The sense of lack is so ingrained that most people are unaware that it's there. They just react to it as if it were true. For most, the sense of lack is a deeply held belief. It seems absolutely and unquestionably true. Of course I'm lacking. Of course my life is lacking. And I have to do something about it or I'll never be happy. This is the lie that keeps the illusion going. So off you go, trying to fix yourself and your life, when the problem is that you're focused on a sense of self and a sense of lack that is not actually real. The truth is, there's nothing to fix about yourself and your life. All is well just as it is. There is no problem with you or with life being just as it is. The sense of yourself and the sense of lack are both manufactured by the mind. They create the human condition that is one of suffering. You not only believe you are who you think you are, but these thoughts about yourself tell you that you are lacking and that your life, indeed life itself, is not good enough. This unrelenting sense of lack interferes with the joy that's possible whenever you're willing to simply be with whatever's showing up in your life. This sense of lack becomes a state of consciousness that you live in without realizing that you're living in it. Like a fish in water, you don't even know you're living under the spell of an illusion. 
the false idea that you need to do or be something different to be okay and to be happy. This assumption causes you to overlook the happiness that is present at your core and ever available in this simple and sweet present moment. The happiness at your core is very subtle unless you turn your attention to it and allow yourself to experience it for more than a brief second. What usually happens instead is that the ego's sense of lack overshadows this subtle happiness and compels you to think or do something to try to feel better. When your attention is focused on fixing a perceived problem, it's not available to notice the quiet beauty, peace, and joy that are already present within you. The subtle happiness of your true nature is experienced only when you're present in the here and now. To the ego, it seems like nothing much is going on in the here and now. The ego likes drama, action, and feeling special. If those things aren't happening, then the ego isn't interested in the here and now, and it would rather daydream, fantasize, plan, or create a problem than experience the peace of life happening as it happens most of the time. When you're identified with the egoic mind, you aren't interested in being present because being present seems boring and pointless. If this were not the case, people could be happy much more easily. But this little lie, that being present is boring and pointless, keeps people entranced by the mind and believing its other lies all of which tell you that there's no other way to live than the way you're living. As long as you believe that being present to life is not worthwhile, you won't find out that you're meant to live in a very different way. The unmasking of this lie is the key to happiness and the key to peace on earth. But each person has to find this out for himself or herself, and everyone eventually does. The story of human existence has a happy ending. Eventually, everyone discovers the truth about the human condition and how to move beyond suffering. Everyone eventually becomes a master. The keys are right here and in simply being present. I'm offering these teachings now because peace must come to earth. You must come together as one people, or this world might not continue to support human life. You must come together to solve your problems, and you must come together so that you don't destroy each other and the natural world. This teaching of peace is not only for your personal well-being, but more importantly, so that humankind may become more peaceful. It's time to see through the illusion and lies spun by the egoic mind. It's time for many of you to become butterflies. Speaking metaphorically again, the difference between a caterpillar and a butterfly is what moves them. Caterpillars are moved by fear and a sense of lack, while butterflies are moved by joy. These are two very different ways of being. The caterpillar's life is a prison of sorts, in which one's life is created by reacting to fear and lack. The caterpillar doesn't know its own potential as a butterfly, nor does it realize that it's in prison. The caterpillar cannot imagine what is possible, and it's afraid to. It doesn't trust life. It doesn't know that life is a gift that was given for the purpose of learning, growing, playing, and creating. Similarly, most people don't know their own potential. 
as they allow themselves to be defined by the fears and mistaken beliefs of the mind. The source creates through you with joy. It moves and inspires you with joy. In joy, you are free to explore all possibilities. You are free to move beyond limitations of thought, free to experience yourself as joy, which you are. Knowing this joy and following it is the only difference between a caterpillar and a butterfly, but it is a big difference. Joy is native and natural to you. It is in your heart and always has been. Everyone knows joy, but the mind often says things that cause you to deny joy or move in ways opposed to it. Joy is enthusiasm and gratitude for life. It bursts forth to be expressed in the world as creativity and love. Along with love, joy is the motivating force in the universe. It's not separate from love, although language makes it seem so. Joy and love are part of the same force, and this force is the consciousness behind all life. How could being true to it possibly lead you astray? The mind's perspective is that love and joy are nice, but they're not safe, not as safe as fear. The mind tells you that your fears are important and you need them to be safe. This is a lie. Fearful thoughts only keep you chained to caterpillar consciousness. Indeed, that is their purpose, for your divine nature doesn't guide and protect you with such thoughts. Your divine nature doesn't need thoughts at all to move and inspire you. Joy is not a thought, it's a force, a feeling that propels you forward to fulfill your destiny. Yes, each of you has a destiny. You are part of a grand design. Your place and destiny are revealed by joy. Joy is the guiding force in butterfly consciousness. You are meant to be a butterfly and joy is how you become one. Find the joy within you. That is you. Then go where that joy wants to go, do what that joy wants to do, and say what that joy wants to say. Being a butterfly is as simple as that. The mind wants to complicate this with what-ifs, but there's never a good reason to not follow your joy. Is that unbelievable? You may think so. Is it really that simple? Yes. This is my seventh teaching. Follow your joy. Feel free to call upon me. I am at your service. Peace.